Hello and welcome, I'm Lyndon Walker, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everyone, it's been a minute since my last video, and in the meantime, I still forgot to film the sketch process for this piece, so not much has changed. But luckily, since so much time has passed, I have plenty to tell you about. For starters, I went on my first vacation in about, like, 12 years, so that was really nice. My roomies and I all went to New York and had a swell time. We took a bus down, and the last time I was on such an extended bus ride, I actually spilled ginger ale all over myself, which was great. This time around, I made sure to open my ginger ale very carefully, and I feel as though that was a fair trade for the air conditioning not working, but I slept most of the time, so it didn't really matter too much. Or at least to me. Nevertheless, we persevered, and one of the big ticket items we got to see was Little Shop of Horrors. We managed to get front row tickets and it was worth it to get showered by little foam balls by a giant puppet. Not to mention the cast did a great job. We also went to the Natural History Museum, of which we got a private tour courtesy of my roommate. This tour included quizzes, scavenger hunts, and a prize for the winner of said quizzes and scavenger hunts. The prize, which I did not win by the way, was a plush Easter Island head from the gift shop and the bag in which it resided during our whole tour. I also went to a concert and saw Vision Video, both in concert and in person. It was an awesome show, and swell talking with Dusty and Emily, absolutely lovely folks, and I hope to see them jamming again soon. Let's see, other than that, we did a lot of sightseeing. We saw some rats and cockroaches, so I can say, without a doubt, we got the full New York experience. I also took a bunch of pictures of pigeons, which, looking back on it, probably took up more of my vacation time than I would like to admit. And unfortunately, I didn't even get close enough to grab one as a pet, but there's always next time and plenty of street pigeons to go around. Oh, and before we left, three manholes exploded outside our hotel. So that was exciting. <laughs> also, at the time of recording this, it's just past Easter season now, which means it was just past peep season. Because if you know anything about me, it's that I love peeps. And this year, I saw advertisements for a giant peep costume that I desperately wanted but could not find anywhere. But I went for the next best thing and got a giant peep plush bunny instead. He's blue, so I named him Bluebird and we have matching glasses. <laughs> and on the topic of stuffed animals, that reminds me that I finally did something that I've wanted to do for years. And I finally bit the bullet and subscribed to the Pusheen box. I'm really excited to get the first box, especially since by the time it actually comes in the mail, I probably will have forgotten when it was supposed to come, and it'll be like a nice surprise gift for myself. I've also kind of picked up a new hobby. On Wednesdays, my friends and I have been going to Bingo Night over at a cafe we like. It's a really fun, light environment, and the potential prizes are whack. My friend actually won the other night, and we brought home a CD copy of the Titanic soundtrack featuring My Heart Will Go On, performed by Celine Dion. Yep. Our bartender was also really nice. He was throwing some brownies and hit a ceiling lamp. Don't worry, he caught them. Also, I feel like at this point I should probably talk a bit about my painting. My main point of interest in this piece, as well as in many of my pieces, was the color choice. Generally, I tend to work with a lot of high contrast, but I wanted to try and make a lighter, sort of blown out effect, which overall I think I achieved while having a nice time making this piece. And since I've been smashing my paintings and ink work together, I still had the black and white contrast in there. I'm thinking since I usually render the figure in a painterly style and the background in ink, I might actually want to flip-flop that in the next painting, but we'll see if I actually remember to do that. Something else I've been working on in the meantime has been my writing. Some short bits here and there, but also a longer piece I've been working on. I recall telling you about that one whip I was working on, but this one isn't that. 
I felt a bit stuck in that one, so I decided to put it down for a little while so I can look at it again with fresh eyes later. So this one's new. And so far my progress has actually been pretty good. I'm up to 17 pages so far and still trucking along. The inspiration for this story was whales. Yeah. I've watched a lot of whale documentaries recently, and one about walruses, just for fun. Anyway, there are some points in the story where I get to ramble on about some nautical folklore and stories, and I actually wanted to share a little excerpt. So, pretend what I'm about to read is coming from an old, crusty sailor, because I don't want to listen to recordings of myself trying to do a silly voice at the moment. So, here we go. Ahem. Back in the day when we set out on sails and oars, we listened to the sea. Not just in shells held to your ear, but in waves that lapped at the hull of your dory, to the clouds that beckoned the rain. The ways of the wind and the pull of the tides told us where to lay our nets, and it was good. Until the stillness. The wind no longer filled our sails, and the only way to harvest was by oar. Fortunately, the paddling was swift over those calm, glassy waters. Not a cloud in the sky, and not a fish nor mollusk to be caught. Every day for weeks this went on. Those men rode farther with every trip, with nothing to show for it but the blisters on their hands. Until old Jonas and his son Jacob, like all the rest, they paddled out until nothing surrounded them but water. The sun shone off the sea so brightly it brought tears to Jonas's eyes, yet he didn't look away. It's uncertain as to what exactly he saw in the water that day, but it drove him to what can only be described as madness. Jonas was the first to return to the docks that day, his nets untouched. Immediately, he made his way to the house of Chief Justice Josiah and confessed that he had cast his son overboard and drowned him. The boy's body was never recovered, and Jonas's wife couldn't bear to lay eyes on him until the day he was hanged. But so the story goes that once Jonas had returned to shore alone, every fisherman after him arrived home with nets bursting with fish. Well, there it is. I hope you liked it. I believe we're getting towards the end of the video now. Bye-bye.